Welcome back guys. Now that you've taken a look at how to connect your router to your console uh, of your management PC, in this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at and doing this lab over here, which is going to be connecting router 1 and router 2 to each other. Uh, we're going to be going through and stepping through the different configuration modes of the router, which is the user exec mode, the privilege exec mode, and the global config, and underneath the global config and to the interface config mode. The, the video over here is for basic router configuration. All right, I showed you the lab picture. The main topics that will be covered in this particular video, as I said, stepping through the configuration modes, we'll also be configuring and verifying the interfaces, assigning IP addresses to the interfaces, and some shortcuts for editing. For example, if you want to take the cursor to the beginning or the end of the line, how to get a previous command that you typed in back, uh, go to the next command after you go on to a previous command. Although you can also use the up and down arrow key, you can also use certain shortcuts over here as well. And we'll be going through it. And as I said, our main objective over here is to take a look at how to configure the two routers to uh, connect to each other. Our focus in this particular lab is the WAN interface. I'll also be taking a look at how the interface should be referenced. How is this the serial 1 slash 0 interface? How is this interface the Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface? How do I reference that inside your router config mode? So with that in mind, let's get started with the first to uh, topic over here, which is stepping through the different configuration interface uh, modes that you have on a router. So as soon as you go through and you boot up the router, the first thing it'll tell you on a blank router is, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? I referred to that in uh, one of the previous videos that this is the initial configuration wizard. When would this wizard pop in? The reason for this wizard popping in is if you do not have an existing startup config. And the iOS finds that, that it, you don't have a startup config. If you don't have a startup config, it knows that you don't have any configuration on the router. So it prompts you with a bunch of different questions that allows you the ability to configure the router using a wizard. In my case, I'm going to make you into experts, so I don't want you guys go, going through the wizard. That's for people that would have no information or no knowledge of the routers. You guys will be experts, so let's go ahead and do the, the right way. So in my case over here, I'm going to use the, the terminal program called SecureCRT. That's my favorite program, rather than using uh, PuTTY or the HyperTermal. So what I've done is I booted the router up, and as you guys can see, it's asking me, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? What does that tell you about this router? That this router right now, I'm through the, going through the console because otherwise I would never see this uh, screen if I was doing Telnet or the aux connections because those need to be configured. I'm seeing this screen. That means I'm going through the console port over here. So I'm going to say no to the wizard so I can start configuring it from scratch. When you press no over here, it needs to go through uh, three, four seconds where it actually loads up the, the default config. So give it some time, it'll come back. And once it comes back, you just press enter, tells you all the different interfaces that it has and gives you the prompt. This prompt tells you a couple of things. Number one, it tells you the host name of the router. The, the default host name of router, if you have not configured it, is router. That's the name of the router. The other thing that it's also telling you is the, the mode that you're in. If you see the router host name with the greater than sign, the greater than sign is an indication that you're in the user exec mode. So the user exec mode, if you guys remember from the previous video, is the mode that you cannot do too much with. This is for like, a person that's a level one engineer that just needs to do verification commands for a particular router, this is where you're at. So if you take a look at this, that tells you right over there that you're on a blank router who has the default router name called router, where, and the user right now is in the user exec mode. And that's what this is all about. So you'll see the router, the router prompt. Router is the default host name of the router. The greater than sign indicates the user exec mode, which we talked about. Now, what are the different commands that you can enter over here? The good thing about a Cisco router is it has 
context sensitive help. So the help that I'll show you or give you is only the help or the commands that are available to you in this particular mode. And you want to find out all the different commands that are at your disposal right now is you use a question mark. If you press or type the question mark, it tells you all the different commands that are accessible or that you can type at, in this particular mode. So any command that you cannot type in over here, the help will not display any line for it. Now, you'll also notice when I press the question mark, it showed me a bunch of different commands that you can enter, and it stopped and gave you more. That's a pause that it did. The number of lines that you have that it pauses after can be configured, and we'll take a look at that later on in a later video. But for right now, you notice that there uh, it showed you one page of worth of commands and put a more. Now, if you want to see the next page, you press the space bar to, or press enter. Enter gives you one more line. So if you want to see the next line, you just press enter. Or next command, you just press enter. If you want to go to the next page, you want to do it page by page, space bar is the key. So the space bar would show you the next page of commands that you can type in over here. And again, if you show it gives you another more, that means there's more commands to be uh, seen over here. Press the space bar. So what you saw over here when I did the question mark over here, it gave you all the commands that you could enter in this particular mode with the help. And you also saw it pauses after a certain number of lines in the question mark. You can either go to the next line or next command that you want to take a look at in terms of help by pressing the enter key. Or if you want to go to the next page, you want to show the next page worth of commands, you press the space bar key. So that's what we learned over here. So question mark is for the help. And if you want to go to the next page, it's the space bar. The other thing I also showed you is how you can use the enter key to get just a single command, the next command over there. Now we've done that. The next thing that we're doing in this particular lab is to step into the next mode. The, the next mode after the user exec mode is the privilege exec mode. The difference between the user exec mode and the privilege exec mode is, as I said, in user exec mode, you're limited in the number of verification commands that you can do. And again, no config commands can be done in user exec mode, but at least the verification you can do over there. Even in terms of the verification, you're limited in the number of commands that you can execute for verification. It doesn't give you access to all the show or verification commands that you have. All right. If you want to get access to all the verification commands, you need to move into the next mode. The next mode is called the privilege exec mode. In the privilege exec mode, one, you get access to all the verification commands, not just a subset, but you also have the ability to do small little things like setting the clock of the router, the time of the router. But most of the com uh, config commands are still not done under privilege exec. That would be in the global config, which we'll get into. But before we get to the global config, let's get into the privilege exec mode. And how do I do that? Again, the command to get in from the user exec to the privilege exec is by using a command called enable. When I press enter over here, again, I want you guys to look at the prompt. The prompt changed from router greater than to router pound. The pound sign is again an indication that you are in the privilege exec mode. So this is the sign for priv exec mode. And this is the sign for user exec mode. So just by looking at the prompt, you should know what mode you're in. Now, what's the difference between the two modes? This one, limited verification commands. This one, full set of verification commands. Not only that, you do have some config commands like the clock. How do I move into the privilege exec mode? By typing in the command enable on your user exec prompt. Now, the other thing that I also want you guys to take a look at over here, a couple of things actually. Number one, the number of commands that are available to you in this particular mode. So if I press the same question mark over here, it gives you one page. Press the space bar to get the next key. Second page. Press another space bar. Three pages worth of commands. I'm not, I'm still not done. Four pages of verification commands. 
five pages of verification commands, six pages of verification commands. So what do you guys see over here? You have a lot more verification commands in your privilege exec mode, a limited number of verification commands in your uh, user exec mode. That's one of the differences. That's one of the things that I want you guys to see when you did the question mark in user exec because it's context sensitive help, you only saw a limited number of commands. Whereas in privilege exec mode, you have a lot more commands at your disposal. The other thing that I also want you guys to be aware of over here is when you type the command in. Now, I took the enable command to go from user exec to your privilege exec. If I want to go back into my user exec because I want to get out of it, the command is disabled. So enable to go from user exec to privilege exec, disable to go from privilege exec back to uh, your user exec. So as soon as I typed in disable, press enter, I went back to the use exec mode. Now in here, one of the things that I want you guys to see about and understand about the Cisco IOS, the in, inter network operating system of Cisco devices, is when you type in the command, you don't need to necessarily type the entire command in. I type in enable to move from use exec to privilege exec. I could technically type in enough characters in this command that make it a unique command in this mode. For example, if I type in E, and press enter, it says ambiguous command. That means I don't know what you're trying to type in because I might have more commands starting with E. This is another thing that you can do with context sensitive help. So if you want to find out all the commands that start with the letter E, you can say E question mark. When you do E question mark, it shows you all the different commands that start with the letter E. And you see there's enable, E-N-A-B-L-E, Ethernet, E-T-H-E-R-N-E-T, -E -E and exit. So you have three commands starting with the letter E. So when you typed in the letter E, it did not know whether you were trying to type in enable, Ethernet, or exit, because those are the th three commands starting with E. So if you type in E-N, notice that E-N only matches enable, because Ethernet starts with E-T, exit starts with E-X. -E so when I type in enable, that tells the router, hey, this guy is trying to type in enable because that's the only possible command that is available to it in this particular mode. So you actually don't need to type in the entire command. You can just type in enough characters in the command to make it unique in that particular mode, and it would take that command. So rather than typing in enable, I could also type in en, I would get the same result. Although I typed in en, the router knew you typed in enable because there's no other command that starts with en. Same thing with disable. Can I type in dis? Let's check. If it tells you that it's an ambiguous command, that means there's other commands that start with dis. So I can do dis question mark. It says, oh, disable and disconnect. Both of them have, both of them have dis at the first, as the first three characters. So you can say disa, which makes it unique. Press enter. It puts you back into the user exec mode. That is, again, context-sensitive help that allows you the ability to put in, to first of all find out what are the different commands that are available, and then put in the shortest number of uh, characters in to get the command done. Rather than typing the entire disable, you can just type in uh, DISA and get the same result. All right? So you guys now saw how to move from use exec to privilege exec, find out all the different commands in there, or and how to move back from privilege exec to user exec. And that was what this guy, these are the things that I tested over here. We did step number seven, using the enable command to move. I showed you the prompt. The prompt for the privilege exec is a pound sign. I showed you how to move back from privilege exec to user exec by using the disable command. We took a look at the shortcuts for enable. I can type in en to make it a unique command within the user exec. It knows what you're typing in because there's no other command starting with en. And the similar thing that we did with disable to move from privilege exec to use exec by typing in disa, which makes it a unique command within privilege exec. All right, moving further on, let's do the next steps in this particular lab. Now, let's say you want to exit out completely. I want to go from use exec and log out so I'm done with my, my session. How do I do it? I can type in exit or log out to get out. So let's go ahead and do that just to see that. So right now I'm in use exec mode. If I type in exit, it logs me out. If 
I want to get back, it tells you how to get back. It says press enter to get uh, press return to get started. Again, when I press enter, I get put into my use exec mode. From this mode, if I want to get into privilege exec mode, EN takes me to privilege exec mode. This gives me access to all my verification commands. And that is what this thing was all about. Step number 11 to log out. Let's also try the log out command. We didn't do that. So I'll say exit. Oh no, let's try it. log out this time around. Out, return, I'm back in. So that is step number 11 done, step 12 done. Now move back into privilege exec mode by typing in the en command. Let's do that. So, so far you guys know about two configuration modes again, the user exec, limited verification commands, privilege exec, all the verification commands plus, oh sorry, all the verification commands plus some configuration commands. So that part is done. Now my third configuration mode that you have over here is called the global configuration mode. Now the global configuration mode is where you actually do the configurations. And the way you move into the global configuration mode is by typing in a command called configure terminal. All right? That's the full command that will get you into global config mode. Let's do that and then once I'm there, I'll show you the prompt and how to get back. So the full command, again, global config mode, to go into global config mode, I need to be in the privilege exec mode. I cannot be here and go into global config mode. The command to go into global config mode is configure terminal. But if I type it in over here, it's an invalid command. Why? In order to get into the global config mode, I need to go through the privilege exec mode. So how do I go into privilege exec mode? En, I'm in the privilege exec mode now. I can type in ter uh, configure terminal and I'm into the global config mode. What's the prompt for global config mode? The prompt over here, if you take a look at it, is router config within parentheses pound. Whenever you see the config over here, that tells you that's an indication that you're in the global config mode. All right? The config is your indication. Now, you can be a in a sub-config mode of the global configuration mode. It'll always be config dash something else if you're in a sub-config mode. But when you just see config, you're in the main global config mode. So how did I move in into the global config mode? I use the configure terminal command in the privilege exec mode has to be in privilege exec, I need to execute this command and it'll put me into the global config mode which has a prompt config indicating you're in global config mode and then the pound, that's your prompt. The prompt is a very important thing over here. Done that, now how do I move back into the, the uh, privilege exec mode once, in, once I'm in global config mode? The command is exit again. Exit will move you down back to the privilege exec mode. Now, once I'm there, if I want to go back into global config mode, configure terminal is a full command, or you can type in the shortcut, which is conf t. Conf to make configure uh, good enough to make it unique, and then t for terminal. Again, back into the global config mode. So you guys saw how to move in and move out from the privilege to global, global back to privilege. And that is this thing over here. I showed you how to move in. Let's move back now. If you want to exit from the global config mode, you can either type in N. We haven't done that. Exit we have done. When you type in exit, you'll go back to the privilege exec mode, which I showed you. All right. Now, if you want to log out from privilege exec mode, you can type in exit. Okay. So another thing that I also, yeah, exit over here. And exit. Now, I don't need to exit to user exec mode by doing a disable and then typing exit. If I want to directly exit over here in my privilege exec mode, I can type in exit and it'll log me out completely or log out. Either one will take me out. So I don't need to go from uh, privilege exec to user exec to exit. I can directly exit from the privilege exec mode. So the exit, complete exit, is available to you from where? user exec or privilege exec. You cannot exit from 
config mode. When you do a config mode exit, it takes you where? It'll take you into privilege exec and from there you can exit out. So this is how you completely log out. And this is your logout screen. This is the screen that it looks like when you're not connected in. All right, we haven't tried the end. Let's try the end. The end, config T, end. So end or exit will take you into your uh, privilege exec mode. There is another thing that the end does, but we'll show you. I'll show you that when I'm in a sub config mode. All right, let's go back to my slide over here. This is an important depiction over here that I want you guys to take a look at because it summarizes the way you move from one mode to the other. You take a look at it from user exec mode over here. If I want to move into privilege exec, I can either type in enable or EEN. To move back, I type in disable or DISA. From privilege exec, if I want to go to global config, configure terminal or conf P. To move back from config mode to privilege exec mode, exit or end would take you there. I hope everybody is comfortable with this. This is something that you'll be, it'll be second nature as we go through the course because this is something that you'll do in each and every lab. But this is where you start with, so I needed you guys to see that. The next thing I want to you guys to take a look at is the interfaces, how I refer to the interfaces, and then once I know how do I refer to the interfaces, how do you start configuring them? So that's my next thing. Configuring interfaces, first of all, before we configure the interfaces, you need to be able to refer to the interfaces. So when you look at the router, on the router you will have different slots. I'm showing you a router with two slots, the routers with, which have four slots, six slots, a bunch of different slots. So on that slot, if you take a look at over here, on slot zero, I have two Ethernet ports, E0 and E1, on slot zero. So I have two ports on slot zero, and I have two ports, which are serial ports on slot one. When I refer to these interfaces, the Ethernet interfaces will be referred to as Ethernet in this case, followed by the slot number of the interface. So if I want to configure this interface, I'm going to point to e interface Ethernet slot slash port in that manner. So this interface, although it's, you see it as E0, the full name of that interface will be Ethernet 0 for slot 0, 0 for port 0 on slot 0. Similarly, Ethernet 0 for slot 0 and 1 for this guy. Okay, slot 1 has two interfaces. This would be serial what? The serial WAN interface, slot 1, port 1. This is going to be serial slot, sorry, still slot 1, port 0. All right? Could, have, could this have been reversed? Absolutely. I could have Ethernet on this side as well. So in slot 1, when I put the interface in, it's up to me. These are modular routers generally. So you have the ability to put in an Ethernet slot over here. So rather than putting a serial slot, if I had put an Ethernet set of ports over here, E0 and E1, they would have been referred to as E1 slash 0 and 1 slash 1 if the Ethernet slot is was, uh, was on the, the adapter was slot 1 was Ethernet. That's how I would refer it to. You can also get modules that have more than two ports. So I could have gotten an Ethernet port which had four ports on it. A module that had four ports on it, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Let's say that was inserted in slot 1, so all these ports would be referred as e Ethernet 1 slash 0, Ethernet 1 slash 1, Ethernet 1 slash, uh, let's say, 2, and Ethernet 1 slash 3. All right? The other thing that I also want you guys to do or understand over here is that when you refer to the interface, although the full name of the interface is Ethernet, if you do not have any other interfaces that are what? Ethernet interfaces, you can always use the word interface E, which refers to, because it's a unique interface name, 
E0 style 0. This one or Ethernet 0 style 0 would be the same. Similarly, you don't need to type in interface. You can say INT E0 style 0 to refer to, let's say, this interface. Hopefully that's clear in terms of how you reference the interfaces. Now, in order to go and configure any of the interfaces, you need to be in the global config mode to be able to go into the interface config mode to be able to configure those interfaces. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So now in this particular section over here, I'm going to take a look at how to configure the interfaces, point to the interfaces. So let's do that over here. What I want, what I want, what I want to do over here is show you how to go in and come out of the, the interfaces. So let's take a look. Again, if I do interface over here, Ethernet 0 slide 0, it's going to give me an error because I'm in the wrong mode. In order to go to the interface config mode, to be able to configure the parameters of the interface, I need to be in the right mode. If I press enter over here, invalid command. So I'll do conf t, go into the global config mode, and type in the same command that I typed in in the privilege exec mode. And this time around, what's going to happen, if I spell it correctly, it's going to change my mode over here to config if, if. If stands for interface. Now, it doesn't tell you exactly which interface I'm in, but it tells you that you're in the interface config mode. So you would need to know the previous command to know what interface you've gone into. By default, all the interfaces are down, meaning disabled. So if you want to bring them up, the command, there's no enable command. There's a shutdown command that disables it. So if you want to bring it up, you say no. No means don't shut down. So it's a double negative. Don't shut it down means bring it up. So there's no command to bring it up. It's a command to say don't shut down means bring it up. So this interface, Ethernet 0 slide 0, will come up. Take a look at it. And I'll tell you that with the console message that Ethernet 0 slide 0 is changed to up. OK? Similarly, I want to do Ethernet 0 slash 1 up. Now, there's two options over here. I can either exit, go back into the global config mode, and go into Ethernet 0 slash 1. I want you guys to notice two things. Number one, I didn't use Ethernet completely. I just used E. And the other one, I didn't use a space. It's entirely up to you. Space is arbitrary between E or Ethernet and the, the slot and the type. So I could just type in E01 over here, or I could have typed in E0 slash 1 over here. Either one is OK. OK? Let's just do it like this so that you guys can see it. Now I'm referencing E01, but the prompt will say, still say config if. OK? Now, the other thing that you also need to know is, although I needed to be in the right mode to go from where? From user to privilege. I had to be in user exec mode and type in EN to get to privilege. And I had to be in privilege exec mode to type in conf T to get into global. And I had to be in global to be able to go into interface. But the thing is, once I'm in global and I want to go into from one interface mode to another interface mode, I can do it directly from this interface and jump into the other one. I don't need to go back to global, which I did in this case. Remember, I was under Ethernet 0 slide 0. I did the no shut and then exited back to global before coming into the other interface. I don't need to do that. Need. I could technically Right underneath Ethernet 0 slash 0, type in interface E0 slash 0. So I would jump into E00. But you need to keep track of what command you typed in. Because the prompt would just say config interface. It doesn't tell you which one. Unless you see the command over here saying, hey, oh yeah, the last command I executed was Ethernet 0 slash 0. That's the interface mode that I'm in. So any command that I do right now will be referring to that interface. This one I had already no shot. So if I do it again, it's not going to give me any message because the, the interface is already no shot. No shot means has been bought up. Now, at the same time, if I do E0 slash 1, go into E0 slash 1, notice I'm just jumping from one interface to the other. It's absolutely OK to do that. Once you're in the global config mode, you can move between the different modes by just tapping in that interface mode, that you, interface that you need to go into. So I went into E0 slash 0, E0 slash 1. Now I'm on under these, this interface, E01, which I have not 
bought up yet. So if I want to bring that up, no shot. So now you get that message that E01 is up. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the lab over here. I showed you how to reference the interfaces. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a smaller lab that's showing you certain things about the, the interfaces. Again, these two steps, step four, step five, I've actually shown you how to do that already, but I'll go through that anyways. The command that will allow you to go to the Ethernet or the serial interface is what? Interface Ethernet 0 sty 0, no shot, then I exit it. In this case, I went to serial, did the no shot exit. I could have also accomplished the same thing, Ethernet 0 sty 0, no shot, and jump directly from what? This interface mode to S1 sly 0. I didn't need to go between the different interfaces. If you look at your diagram, let me take you back to the diagram, you'll notice that although I have multiple interfaces, I'm only using E00 and S10. So let's bring up S10 as well on this particular device. Where is it? There you are. I've gone past this. We were over here right now. Okay, so let's bring up S10 as well. So I can go to, I'm in the config mode in the, uh, the easier one interface. I can just jump directly, at, type in S10 and do a no shot over here as well. So again, what is it doing for you guys? It is allowing you to move from one to another interface. So that's what we have done. That's what we have accomplished over here on router one at this point. We'll be doing the same thing on the other side so that we can talk between the two routers. So that is my next lab over here. What is that? Configuring the interfaces. Let's configure the interfaces based on the following table and the previous diagram. Previous diagram I'm referring to is this. What I want to do is I want to configure the IP addresses. Now, if you take a look at the diagram, the network administrator has already given you an address space of 192.168.12.0 is the network between R1 and R2. This network over here has been assigned 192.168.1.0, different network, 192.168.2.0, different network over here. So I have three networks, Ethernet towards the internal LAN, Ethernet towards the internal LAN over here, and the WAN interface, which is a common interface because R1 and R2 are directly connected to each other. They need to be on the same network. These are on different networks because the function of the router is to connect one network to the other. All right? So let's go ahead and configure this, and that's the exact same thing I've done in your table over here. All right, so if you take a look at the, lab, uh, the table, R1 has Ethernet 00, which is 192.168.1.1 on the Ethernet side. On the serial side is 12.1. I will do the same thing on router 2, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go to router 1. I'll start with Ethernet 00. And Ethernet 00, based on our table, should have an IP address of 192.168.1.1 with a mask of 24. If you guys remember from our IP addressing and the subnet mask uh, videos, how to write this in the long format because the IP address, when you type it in on the router, does not understand the slash mask. It understands the full mask or the long, long version of the mask. So we need to type it in like this. So let's go ahead and do that on my first router, interface E00, so I'm in that interface, and the IP address based on the diagram, the way you type it in is IP address 192.168.1.1, so the IP address of this interface is going to be 192.168.1.1, with this mask, it's already up, although I could type in no shot if I had not done that. I've done that already, so I don't need to do it again. Similarly, on router one, I also have S10, which is configured as 192.168.12.1. Again, the mask is 255. These are the commands over there. I've given you the commands as well. S10, IP address, 192.168.12.1. If router one on that WAN interface is 12.1, the directly connected, the same router on the same network should be 12 and some unique address over there. I'm, I picked 12.2 to make it unique on the common network. So let's go ahead and do, our, uh, do this on router one now. Interface S1 slide zero. 
IP address. And again, I can just say IP add because it makes it unique. 192.168.12.1. Again, I've done the no shot, so I don't need to do it. So router one in terms of IP addresses is configured. Let's do router two now. Router two, I haven't done anything on, so it should have that. Would you like to enter initial configuration dialog? I've connected to both routers at the same time. So I'll say no over here. Again, just like router one, it goes through and says, oh, it's a default config. I need to bring it up. It's blank. EN puts you into privilege exec mode. From privilege exec mode, the next mode that I need to do or go into to configure the interfaces is the global config mode, conf C. Changes the prompt. Now I can start configuring it. Okay, how do I configure it? Interface E0 slide 0. Again, go back to the question. It wants you to configure router 2 is E00 on a different network, which is on the 2 network, 192.168.2 network, with a dot 1 as the IP address. So you guys know how to configure an IP address now. 192.168.2.1, but the mask is 24, which is 255.255.255.0. Bring the interface up because this is the first time I'm doing it. You should see a message saying that the interface has been bought up. Similarly, S10, which is the interface between R2 and R1, R2 is 12.2 on that same network. So let's go ahead and do that. IP address 192.168.12.2. And no shot. So the interfaces have been enabled to enable the interface the command is no shot so that is what i've done in this particular slide over here now once i bring the interfaces up the next thing to do over here is to verify whether the interfaces are up or not now the thing about the verification commands by default the verification commands are the show commands the show commands to verify are things that you cannot do in global config mode or any of the sub config modes of the global config mode. All right. So if I try to do this command show IP interface brief, which is the command that shows you the, uh, the IP addresses configured on all the different interfaces and their statuses, including all the other interfaces that I might have on this router, I cannot do it from this mode. If I do, it'll give me a, an error message. Take a look. Show IP interface brief is a command invalid input why I'm in the wrong mode there's a workaround to that as well I'll show you that but before that the other thing I want you guys to see over here I can once I'm in config mode I can exit it'll take me to the global config mode from there if I type in exit it'll take me to the privilege exec mode but if I wanted to if I was in a sub config mode of the global config so right now if you take a look at it I am in, this is your user exec. From there, I went to priv exec. From there, I went to global config. And from global config, I went to the interface config. Now, when I type in exit, exit takes me one level down. If I want to go to privilege exec, I need to type in another exit to go there. So exit over here and exit over here. If I want to jump directly from here to here, I can use the word end. If you remember, earlier on I told you I would show you something specific about the end, and that is that time over here. So config, uh, if you're in a sub config mode and you want to jump directly from the sub config mode, configuration mode, Sub, uh, sub, uh, sub mode, which is the interface mode, I can use the word end. Rather than typing in exit twice, I can always use the word end to do it. End will take me directly into privilege exec mode. Rather than typing in exit, exit, I can type in end and it takes me directly to the privilege exec mode. There's no other shortcut. This is the shortcut. You cannot go from uh, config mode directly to user exec mode or any other mode to user exec mode. So this is where you can type in the show command. Now that command that gave me an error earlier on now should work and it'll give you a good indication of the interfaces that this router has. You can see over here, I have eight interfaces on my router. I have four ethernet interfaces, four serial interfaces, four 
connecting my router to other devices. But at the same time, you will notice that all the other interfaces, E01, E02, E03, they are what? Shut down. And not only that, they do not have any addresses assigned to it. Ethernet 00, the one that I just configured, has an IP address assigned to it, 192.168.1.2.1, and the status is up. That means it's running. So that's what you want to check. Or well, running means it's connected. It's actually fully up. Serial 10 is also configured with an IP address of 12.2, and it is up. So that's how you check the interfaces, not only the ones that are up, but all the other interfaces that I have on the router. Show IP interface brief will show you that command. Now, I don't need to type in interface completely. I can say show IP int brief, which is good enough to make it a unique command, and it'll show me the same output. And I can do the same thing on the other device as well. So that's how I verify the command. Now, the other thing is a shortcut. Now, what did I tell you when I do the command in global config? If I did show IP interface brief over here, it gave me an error saying, hey, you cannot do a show command in global config. Why? Verification commands can either be done in use exec or privilege exec. You cannot do show commands in the global config. This basically caused the administrators to exit out before they could, could verify their configurations. This Cisco got, uh, caught a lot of flack for this. So they put a workaround over here. The workaround was if you want to do a show command, which actually is executed in privilege exec mode, use the word do in front of the show command. Do basically was a workaround that told the iOS, hey, listen, do tells it that you're executing this command in a different part of the configuration mode. Show IP interface brief, and guess what? I can do the command, not by just, just typing in the show command, if I'm in the global config command and the workaround to type in a verification command is put the do in front of the show command. But by default, the show commands can should have been executed only in the user exec or the privilege exec mode. Do is a workaround. It's not the real thing. The real thing is show command should be done in the user or privilege exec mode. Do is something that they added on later iOSs. Initially, you did not have that. And I have also documented that for you guys over here. Do show IP interface brief to execute the command in the interface config mode or any other global config mode. I could also have done this command if I wanted to. I was in global config mode when I did it or even under the in interface over here. Anywhere under the global config mode, sub config mode doesn't matter. I can do the show commands by, ty by typing in D. At the same time, do does not. I put an N to go back into the privilege exec, exec mode. Do does not work over here because this is the right mode for it. Do is a wrong command. Do only works in global config to execute a show command. If you're in the privilege exec mode already, just type with the show or sh is good enough for show. So a lot of times you'll see people typing sh ip interface brief, which is really show ip interface brief. Hopefully this is all good and we have covered everything in this particular slide as well. Now, one more thing that I want to verify over here is if I actually have connected the two devices to each other. For that, there's a very useful command, one of the very popular troubleshooting commands on the internet. It's called the ping command. What does a ping do? It sends a dummy packet to the specified destination to see if I can communicate to that destination. Right now, my two routers are directly connected to each other. If they're directly connected to each other, I should be able to communicate between the two routers. So what I can do over here is use the ping command, type in the destination address if I'm on router one and I want to check whether I can communicate to router two, call dot two. When it is a successful ping, means I'm going to send a dummy packet and I'll get a response back from the destination saying, yes, I do exist, we are connected. So I get a dummy packet back. Generally on a Cisco router, it sends a dummy packet with 100 bytes of data. All right, on a, you can do a ping command on your PC as well. When you do it on a PC, the dummy packet size is about 32 bytes. On a Cisco router, it's about 100 bytes. 
So again, what does a ping do? It's just sending a dummy packet to see if I can actually reach the destination that I want to ping. So that's what the ping is. And how do I know if I'm reaching or not? I'll get a response back with this indication over here. This is the, the indication that tells me that the ping is working. If you are not working, you'll get a dot, okay? Ping with the exclamation mark is a good thing, dot is a bad thing. So let's verify that. I'm going to go to router one, which has timed out. So en, and I'll do a ping. Ping again is a command that is done either in use exec or privilege exec mode, because it's a verification command. So I'll say ping. 192.168.12.2. I'm trying to, I'm going to send a packet to 12.2, which is directly connected to me, and I should expect a response back. And this is telling you I got five responses back. It also gives you a success rate of 100%. It told you that it sent 100 byte ICMP packets. These data packets, the dummy packets, are called echo packets. So I send an echo packet to my destination. In my case, the destination was this. So this packet that goes out is called the echo packet. And he responds back. He sends a packet type back called an echo reply, saying, yes, I am alive. So basically, the exclamation is telling you, I sent five packets, and I got five packets back. Your connection is good to go. If I had pinged a wrong address, let's say I pinged 12.3, 12, 12 which does not exist, it's going to try to send a packet to 12.3, but it doesn't exist. So Nobody responds back, and that's where you're going to see a dot. And that's what you guys see over here. Good. So that's your verification commands, the pings between the two devices, the exclamation mark of the dot over here. Again, documented for you guys. The last thing in this particular video, some editing keys. Now, I've been typing a bunch of different commands. So if you want to take a look at the previous command, there's two different ways to do it. You can use the up arrow key. When you do the up arrow key, it shows you the previous command. So if you wanted to do the ping again and see it's successful, you can do up arrow, brings the previous command. Another way to bring the previous command up is control P. Control P is for previous. And if I want to go another previous command, like a double up arrow, up arrow, control P. Keep on pressing control P, it'll keep on going to the previous commands that are typed that were typed in in this particular session so i haven't done too much so these are my commands so for example if i do show ip interface brief shows you that uh, and then i'll do a ping just so that you can see this these things now i can do p that was a ping before that i did the show ip interface brief before that i did another ping okay and if i want to execute it press enter good that's the control p and if I do multiple control P's and I want to come back, oh, I made too many control P's. Control N brings me back. So N for previous, N, P for previous, N for next. So those are two shortcuts that you can use. Again, rather than using P and N, a lot of people prefer to use the up arrow or the down arrow key. That's another way of doing the same thing. The other thing, this is very useful, is control A and control E. Let's say I type in the show IP interface brief command but I forgot to put the S in, uh, S in that command. So the command I mistyped because I mistyped it, I put H over here. Now I'll do control P to bring the previous command up. Now in order to edit, I can use the left arrow key, take the command over here and type it, all right? Or I could have done up arrow or control P to bring the previous command, Control A, keep, keeping the control key pressed, A takes the cursor to the start of the line. A towards the start of the line, I can make my error correction and press enter. So now, again, let's do it again. I bring my command again. Control A takes the cursor to the start of the line of the command. I can then edit it by typing in S. So it's show IP interface brief and the command's typed in. What if you made an error? in both places. So I've made an error over here and I made an error over here. So now I do A. I start with this. Oh, I should have edited the end, but I forgot to do it. So I edited the front. Now I need to go to the end of the line. Control E is a shortcut to bring it to the end of the line. So if you want to move the cursor to the end of the line, the shortcut is Control E. 
So you can make those editing by doing A and E, A to the start, E towards the end, E for the previous command and for the next command. And that's what's documented over here. Editing keys that you have, control P, control N, you have control A and control E uh, on your router's iOS to be able to move from one side to the other. So that is your editing keys. The review questions as always. What command moves you from user exec to privilege exec? The command is enable. You could also type in en. What command moves you from privilege exec to global config? Privilege exec to global config, the full command is configure terminal. Or you can do what? Conf T. What command moves you from global config mode to privilege exec? That is either the exit or end. Write the command sequence to configure the IP address 192.168.12.1 slash 24 on serial 1 slash 0 interface. So I would start with en. It will take me from user exec to privilege exec, conf t, takes me to global config mode. Once I'm in global config mode, interface int s1 slash 0 takes me to the sub config mode for the interface. Then the IP address, you can just say IP add 192.168.12.1. I cannot write this as slash 24. I need to do the Conversion, the first 24 bits are my mask, so 24 bits is written like this, and that's what I'm going to write over here. And no shot. Don't forget to bring it up, and the command to bring it up is no shot. And the last thing, what shortcut would take the cursor to the beginning and end of line? Beginning is what? Control A. And the end is control E. Hopefully you enjoy the video, getting into the hands-on part of the things. I would highly recommend that you start doing it on your own. When you do it on, on your own, you remember it better. These are commands that you will be second nature to you guys once you're done with the, the course. Again, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you on in the next video.